Hi hey guys, this is Tensor. Welcome back to Introduction to Rust. This will be our sixth video in the series. Today we're going to be talking about enums or enumerations in Rust. We're also going to touch on options. So enumerations are kind of the perfect thing to talk about now that we've looked at pattern matching. Enumerations are another custom way to make types in Rust. They're sort of like structs, but they allow us to make multiple different variations on a type. So unlike enumerations in a language like C sharp, enumerations in Rust are more like algebraic data types from F sharp or more like union types from Elm. All right, so here's a basic enum, and this enum is actually based off of a union type that I used in my Elm snake tutorial. You can see here that we have an enum uh, keyword, and then we use a capital letter direction, and then the following are fields in this direction, so up, down, left, and right. Basically what we're saying with this is that we can have a type called direction, and it can be either type up, type down, type left or type right. So the actual enum fields can be multiple different things. They don't have to be these uh, unit types. Left and right here are what are called unit types, but we could also make them uh, structs. So for instance, down is using the struct syntax here. So we name the two fields inside of our struct here, X and Y. We give them types and then we can use tuples. So in this case, we're using uh, one single U32, but we could put multiple U32s and even a string in here. And this would also work as well. For our direction though, what makes the most sense is to use a tuple uh, with two U32s inside of it for each one. So if you think about this, you can model up, down, left, and right with an X and a Y coordinate. Up is going upwards in the Y axis, and down is going downwards in the Y axis, whereas left is going negative in the X axis, and Y is going positive in the X axis. So up would be 0, 1, down would be 0, negative 1, left would be negative 1, 0, and right would be 1, 0. Now it might actually be easier for us to replace these tuples with just a struct here. So I've created a struct called point, with an X and a Y coordinate inside of it. And I've put this inside of our enum here. So say we want to instantiate the direction up. We would say let U equal direction, and then we'd use two colons and then up. So essentially the type up is namespace to direction because of this enum keyword. So let's also add another enum in here called keys. And this gives us up key, down key, left key, and right key. Again, I'm sort of modeling this after the snake game tutorial that I did with Elm. Essentially, each direction corresponds with a key. So if a user hits the up key or hits W, then it will point up. So we can kind of model this behavior by using an implementation block. So like with structs, we can use implementation blocks to tie methods to our enums. And in this case, we want to make a method that allows us to pattern match through the different direction types. So in this case, we'll have a method called match direction, which will take in a reference to the self, and then it will output a key type. All right, so here's what's happening. We have our match function here, which takes in self, outputs the key type, and then we have this match block here, and we have to dereference self using this asterisk. And we'll go a bit more into this when we talk about pointers and we talk about references in its own tutorial. So what we're doing here is we're getting direction up, and uh, we don't need the, the actual point inside of up here. And then we're saying, okay, well, if direction is up, then we want to return a keys up keys with a string inside of it that says pressed W. And then the same with down, which will have a string that says pressed S. With uh, left, we'll have a left key with a string that pr says pressed A and so on and so forth. Now take a look what will happen if we call match direction on U and bind it to say like a value called K. You see here that we get an arrow if we try to use debug or if we try to use display. And that's because it doesn't have the trait. So let's derive this trait here for keys. We'll do it also for direction because we'll probably need it in the future. And we'll do it for point as well. And now we'll actually put our debug flag in here. And now we can run our program here. You'll see we get a bunch of errors here, but we also get up key pressed W as our output. Now, just as an aside, we can actually add a little annotation here to get rid of all of these little errors. So the errors are mostly coming from these green lines, which just say that this is never being used in our program. So to get rid of those, we just uh, put a little annotation of allow, and then we add dead code to it. And this 
this basically just tells the compiler that we want to ignore all of the dead code warnings here. So again, if we come through here and we run our program again, you can see here we just get our up key, press W. But say we want to get this string out from the uh, key type. Well, we have to use another uh, implementation block and another match function to do that. So here we're going to create a method called destruct, and we're going to tie it to the keys enum type. So this is going to take in self, which is the uh, of type keys and then we're going to do another pattern match here and you can see here that we uh, take in a reference to self and we output a reference to the string and then inside we have our match block we're going to use that asterisk again to dereference ourself and then we're going to call keys up key and then inside of here we need to call ref s and there's a particular reason for that and we'll I'll talk about that here in a moment so we call ref s and then we're going to output a as you can see here it says a reference to a string so this will allow us to basically destruct the uh, enum type and get the string from inside of it so you see here now we can call k.destruct and bind it to x and we can print that out running the program here as opposed to last time you see here this included the up key this new one just shows us the string, so press W. So this is pretty useful to uh, use enums uh, and then use match statements to allow us to essentially destruct the enums. Now let's kind of talk about this ref keyword and why we're using it. All right, so here's our little example. Say we have a variable u, which equals 10. Then we create a variable v, and then we assign it to a reference of u. So this is a reference to an i32. This is actually equivalent to if we were to say let ref z equal u. And we can show that they're actually equal just by running a simple print statement. So we're just going to say here, if z equals v, print they are equal. So you can see here we ran the program and we got press w and then they are equal. This is actually the same notation. Again, we'll go into more detail about this ref statement and about these references as well as the star statement when we actually look at pointers. All right, so let's look at another use for enums. We have a enum called shape, and shape has a type of rectangle, a type of square, and a type of circle. Rectangle has a width and a height, so it's shaped like a struct. The square just has a U32 in it, and circle has an F64 in it. So you can see here that we have an area function here, which takes in self, and it outputs an F64, running the match statement here on self. And we're saying, okay, if the shape is a rectangle, then take width and height, multiply width and height together, and then uh, cast them into as f64 then with our square here we get the reference to the u32 inside of square then we multiply it together and then again we cast it as a f64 and then for our circle we get our radius and we multiply our radius by itself and then we multiply that by 3.14 but essentially we're using this method for polymorphism so we're using one method to be able to calculate the area for three different types in essence if we just instantiate a rectangle, a square, and a circle here, then we can just say, okay, r dot area for our rectangle, and then print it out, and then r dot q for our square, and then print it out, and then r dot c for our circle, and then print it out. These parts here, where we're casting them as different types, the only reason why we're doing this is because we want to output an F64, because circle, the output is an F64. And uh, if we were to take away one of these, you can see here it causes a huge error. You can see here we get 700, which is the area of our rectangle, then we get 100, which is the area of our square, and then we get 63.585, which is the area of our circle. So again, this is fairly useful if you want to do uh, polymorphism with multiple types. You could just use an enum and then a match type like this. All right, so now let's take a look at options. So Rust doesn't have the concept of nil in it, and there's a good reason for that. Nil is kind of, a, as they say, a billion dollar uh, error. Instead, Rust used what are called options. Now, option is a basic enum type inside of the standard library and it would look something like this so let's create the enum of option and our enum option takes in what's called a generic type so we have this like uh, greater than and less than t inside of it and then we have what's called sum we put our type in there and then we just have none and these are the two fields inside of our enum if we pass something to this enum it will decide whether or not that thing has something in it or nothing in it all right so say we want to make a division function here and we're 
we're going to take in an F64 and an F64 for X and Y, and then we're going to output an option of F64. What this allows us to do is check and see if we're dividing by 0.0, .0 first, and if we are, we're going to send back none, and if we're not, we're going to send back sum with the division inside of it, so uh, X divided by Y here. So then we uh, create a variable called res, standing for result. We call our division function here. We pass in 5.0 and 7.0. This, of course, will give us just a non-zero number. Then we pattern match this so that we can destruct our sum uh, type and get the X out from uh, inside of it and then put this inside of a print statement. So we're also using a special debug flag here. We want to limit the amount of decimal numbers to 10. So we can change this around, say we want seven. So we have a colon period and then the number of decimal points that we want. And you can see here we get 0 0.7142857. So this has seven different decimal points in it. And if we were just to remove the flag, you'll see here that we actually get quite a long number. So you can see here it's, it's quite a bit longer than uh, what we had up here. So the type option represents an optional value uh, basically, if we're going to have a value that could potentially be nothing, then we want to use an option instead. And there are various ways that we can do this aside from like interacting it with it directly like we're doing here. And this is of course fairly useful for like functions that return values that may actually return nothing. Or if we're using data that we do not have the ability to actually manipulate directly. So for instance, say we're dealing with an API and we don't know if data is going to always be pushing through the API. Uh, it's also really good for nullable pointers and it's good for swapping things out. And uh, of course creating optional function arguments and things like that. So hopefully you guys understand why option is a pretty useful feature. As we continue going with this language tutorial, we will use it more and more. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a small little intro and taste because we're talking about enums and, and option is an enum. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you dislike the video, then by all means, hit the downvote as much as possible. Thank you very much and have a good night, guys.